Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a back door to this thing to work. I had technical difficulties for the last 34 minutes, and uh, I figured out a back door way to get online tonight. So I pray that you are patient, you're enduring, and you're standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. We are live. I see it on the computer. We are live. Hallelujah. Let's see if I hear anything. Thank you, Jesus. We are live. Bear with me in a little bit, trying to get things to work here with the sound now. Okay, one thing is another. Thank the Lord God Almighty. Oh, my blessings flow. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Praise the Lord God Almighty, for whom all blessings flow. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight by class. And I pray that you are inspired. You're standing from the faith of Jesus Christ. That you had a wonderful and a beautiful day. But this is the day the Lord has made. I tell you, I don't know about you, but I want to rejoice in his presence because God is in too good not to praise him. If God has brought you through in anything in your life, you should have a reason to praise him tonight. Amen. So let's go into a word of prayer. We're going to have our devotion and then I'm going to get into our lesson tonight. I had some te technical difficulties trying to get online. Really working my nerves today, I tell you. But but I tell you, God is still good, even in, in when we learn how to be patient and just wait on God to give you wisdom on what to do, how to get things to function the way it needs to be. My program that I usually use is malfunctioning for some strange reason. I put everything in, in it correctly after access code information is needed, and it still will not connect online, so I had to go online on the tablet and then reconnect to the other program virtually and then it worked online but it's not working with the system but that's okay because god is still in control he's in the blessing business i don't know about you but i'm excited because this has been a beautiful day that god allowed us to make it through it's been a pleasant weather outside and in spite of the different challenges and things that we have encountered on today we, we're still able to get through things victoriously through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this moment to share your word. Once again, God, I ask that you forgive us our sins, knowing, unknowing, Father God, cleanse from all the righteousness. Remove the business from the day from our minds, oh God, and our hearts, that we have a clear conscience to be focused, to hear from you a rain of word to speak into our lives, oh God, that you would transform our hearts become more like you in the mighty name of Jesus. Change our lives, O oh God. 
Blow our minds, okay? Give us the mind of Christ. Help us to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. And I thank you for healing me and my mother, Father God. She's in the hospital. We pray that the blood of Jesus begin to purge her bloodstream, drive the fluid in her lungs, oh God. Cause her body to function as you have designed for her to be, Father, and even cure her of pneumonia, God. In the name of Jesus, we know that many of our afflictions are righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. And there are many people who have been afflicted, God, but we ask that you touch right now by your spirit, God, and bring healing and relief to their bodies. In Jesus' name, call to be able to rest in peace, knowing that they're in the hands of the Lord and being sustained by your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God Almighty. I tell you, today is a great day to make it a great day. Walk by faith and not by sight. As you take steps of faith, glory, 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 glory. I will show you how much I can do for you. If you live your life too safely, you will never know the thrill of seeing me work through you. When I gave you my spirit, I empower you to live beyond your natural ability and strength. That's why it's so wrong to measure your energy against the challenges ahead of you. The issue is not your strength, but mine, which is limitless. By walking close to me, you can accomplish my purposes and my strength. And that is so true. When we trust God to walk by faith, we can accomplish anything God put in our hearts to fulfill according to his word as we trust in him. Our devotion, this was one I read yesterday, um, but today's devotion is waiting, trusting, and hoping are intricately, intricately, intricately <laughs> word trip me up every time, intricately connected like golden strands are interwoven to form a strong chain. Trusting is the central stand or strand because it is the my, is the response from my children that I desire the most. So trusting is the central strand because it is my the response of my children that I desire the most. Waiting and hoping embellish the central strands and strengthen the chain that connects you to me. Waiting for me to work with your eyes on me is evidence that you really do trust me. If you mouth the words, I trust you, while anxiously trying to make things go your way, your words ring hollow. Hoping is future directed, connecting you to my inheritance in heaven. However, the benefits of hope fall fully on you in the presence. Because you are mine, you don't, tr tr you don't just pass time in your waiting. You can wait expectantly and hopefully trust. Keep your antennas out to pick up even the faintest glimmer of my presence. Your antennae, you know what that is? That's your antenna, your frequency to be able to tap into God's presence and know that God is right there. So we just heard two devotions, one walking by faith and not by sight, and the other one waiting and trusting and hoping. Because we have to learn how to wait on God to trust God in his word and have hope that he will fulfill his promises in our lives. That's your expectancy. As you expect God to do his work in your life, you cannot try to fix things according to what you feel and what you want to be. You got to learn how to wait on God and allow his word to manifest. Otherwise, your words become hollow. That means empty, futile, vain, no power in your words. And the words that we speak are powerful either powerful in life or powerful in death. So it's up to you to make a decision to believe God's word, stand on God's word, and let the word of God work in you to manifest God's power in your life. Amen. That's our devotion for the night. So we're going to get into our lesson tonight. Glory to God. And tonight we're in chapter 3 of the book, Breaking the Threefold Demonic Cord. Of Jezebel, how to discern, how to discern, my God, the entrapment of the enemy. I tell you, we need to know how to discern those things because the enemy sure is busy. He's really doing things in his power to distract and deter you from the promises of God's word. But if you don't know the word of God for yourself, 
to give fall prey to anything the enemy wants to do in your life. Amen. So we want to definitely be vessels of honor and not dishonor. We have to learn how to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. We have to learn how. That's a process. When you get in God's word, God would give you the wisdom and the knowledge on how to overcome the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. And a lot of people in the body of Christ are, are pray to that spirit because they're not prayed up. I have never heard of so much mess in the church than I have this last week. And we have to get to the place where we're praying for our churches, praying for the people in the body of Christ, praying for the shepherds, praying for the leaders, because we have to come back to the place of prayer. Prayer is the thing that God used the most to empower you to be able to be discerning against the lies of the enemy. If you're not praying, how would you know when the enemy's lying to you? If you're not seeking God's face, how would you know when the enemy is bringing a deceptive word to you? You got to study your word to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You got to know the word of God for yourself. We all have faults. We all have failures. We all make mistakes. We're human beings. So you cannot get around mess ups and hang-ups, and issues, and troubles, and all those things that happen in our life. Those are the normalities of life. How, however, God will give you wisdom how to deal with the things that you're dealing with in your life that's not of God. you got to know how to face God, word, face value. God, His word, it stands sure, and it's tried, it's been tested, and God backs up his word. Just like a lawyer, when he goes to court to plead the case for his client, he gathers all the evidence that he needs to prove that his client is innocent. Then you have the defender who gathers all the information and details to prove that the client is guilty. We have an advocate, the word says. We have a great high priest who forever lives in the Bible to make intercession for us. That's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He intercedes for us every day of our lives that we can live in the freedom that's found in knowing him. Amen. So tonight, we are going to talk about the gods of Jezebel. Oh my God, this is going to be a good one tonight, y'all. I hope you're ready for it. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because it's about to get, get to cracking. Gonna crack the crack the enemy's kingdom tonight. Because God is revealing things that we need to know about how to deal with our adversary. Glory to God. Go to Exodus in your Bible, chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20 is the chapter where God gave Moses the laws to give to the children of Israel. He told them, let's start in verse 1. In Exodus chapter 20, starting verse 1, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. I am the great I am that I am. I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Before we get any further, what God was talking about, he was reminding the children of Israel that he is the one that brought them out of Egypt. When they were in slavery for 400 years, God is the one that brought them out with his mighty hand. He performed signs and wonders to Pharaoh to convince Pharaoh that he was the I am, that I am. And then as the, God did all these different signs and wonders and miracles in his face, he hardened Pharaoh's heart. But yet he softened his heart enough to release his children from bondage. We have to get to the place in ourselves we recognize 
There are some things you've gone through in your life you couldn't get yourself out of if you wanted to. You got to know how to pray and seek the face of God for yourself and know exactly what to do, when to do, how to do. Because if you don't know the word of God, then you're going to find yourself always reverting back to, I wish I should have, could have, would have, which got you nowhere, but brought up more despair and misery in your heart. Ain't that something? We do it all the time. We nurse, curse, and rehearse our issues and the problems we're dealing with in our lives. And we let other people remind us that we that we always are stuck in the past. Sometimes you got people signed by the enemy to come along just to, to conversate about how you used to be. And they come to the place where they want to remind you what you used to do, how you were, and, and all the different things that keep you in bondage to the past. You got to get to the place in yourself where you close the door to the past. Close the door to those naysayers and those haters and those deceivers and manipulators that come into your life with tricks and cunning, cunning plans to deceive you. Verse 3 says, Thou shall have no other God before me. God meant this. And this is where the spirit of Jezebel operates. Because Jezebel operates with false doctrine she uses idolatry to take the place of God in your life. And we so foolish sometimes because we're not seeking the face of God. We fall prey to her idol worship. You don't believe it? Buy a brand new car. And all of a sudden now you got this new car, you don't want to go to church no more. Because now you're doing everything in your power to maintain your idol. You wash your idol every week. You clean it inside every week. You're doing everything that you want to do to make your idol look good and neglect to tell God thank you and even avoid going to the house of worship because you feel like I can drive my car anytime I choose on Sunday morning. I don't have to go to church nowhere. Throughout the week, I don't have to go to church nowhere. Because I don't have to now. I got what I wanted. I prayed unto God for a brand new car. God gave it to me. So anything we're pray, taking the place of God, we're praying for, and it's, and, and it's not of God's will, it's not going to maintain. Because it becomes idol worship. So you should have another God before me. You shall not bow down to, nor, to them nor serve them. So go into the book, the Bible. Go back to the Bible. Verse 2, we read that already. Verse 3 said, Thou shalt know the God before me, right? Go to verse 4. It said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for the Lord thy God am a jealous God. My God, my God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. There are some haters of God in the house of God. And God makes it clear. Because he's not talking to the sinner man. He's talking to the people who confess that he's the God of their lives, the Lord of their lives through Jesus Christ. He's talking to the body of Christ. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve the idol gods. What he's talking about. For I, the Lord, am thy, uh, uh, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the father from the children and the third and fourth generation and the them that hate me. Verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That visitation God is talking about is the punishment upon the fathers because of their idol worship, their iniquity of heart, their wickedness in their hearts. He's making it clear that I will visit the iniquity of my fathers and the children and third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You look in the news. Look on television. Look in the newspapers. See a lot of haters of God in the world today. 
because their hearts are, are spurned with evil and malice and hatred and wickedness, they're doing every malicious thing they can to hurt somebody else because their hearts are filled with the enemy's evil, just, just stubborn, prideful, arrogant, haughty. So we got to be prayed of. Jezebel is labeled a harlot, an adulteress, and one who operates in witchcraft. Look at 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 22. She is depicted as someone who's con who was controlling, manipulating, scheming, sexually promiscuous, perverted, and an idol worshiper. That's the spirit of Jezebel. One who is controlling, one who is a manipulator, one's always plotting evil devices against other people, sexually promiscuous, perverted. And that's what God is saying about those who follow after this spirit Jezebel. They become a harlot. They go whoring after other gods. And that's what God said about the children of Israel. Many times they went whoring after other gods and God had to allow them to go into to exile many times into captivity because of the rebellion of the heart. But he still loved them because every time they cried out for God to help them, God came through and delivered them. How in the world could someone become so evil through through her devoted allegiance to her idols, evil spirits took over Jezebel's life and became con a controlling influence. So you wonder why some people in the body of Christ are so mean and so evil and so malicious because they allow themselves to be influenced by the spirit of Jezebel, which took control of them. And cause them to do harm to other people through their mouth, through murmuring, grumbling, complaining, spreading rumors and gossiping, and doing things that they know that God has not approved of them to do. You know one thing I was thinking about today? How a lot of people don't fear God no more. They don't fear the judgment and the punishment of God no more. I heard people say throughout the years that. You know, I, I know I'm a sinner and I'm going to die and go to hell. And when I go to go to hell, I'm going out with a bang. And don't have no conviction, no shame for the evil they do, the wrongdoings. And they make, make it seem like it's a, a beautiful thing to live the way they live outside of God. Not knowing that they're invoking the judgment of God upon themselves to bring them into a place of condemnation and damnation. Because that's exactly what's going to happen to those who turn from God and follow idol worship, live a lascivious life, a wicked, sinful life. They have to return to the Lord and allow God to cleanse their minds to cleanse their hearts. People become like gods. They serve. Her every motivation was satanically inspired. Jezebel is influenced by the enemy and controlled by the enemy. It doesn't matter who she influenced. It could be a pastor, it could be an apostle, it could be an evangelist, be a teacher, be a missionary, be a child of God, a Christian. Whoever would listen to her and follow after her evil ways, she will entrap you and enslave you. People become like the gods they serve. That is so true because when you, your heart is not following the God, then who are you following? You're following the enemy, the devil. Just as Christians become more like more Christ-like because they worship him, others become a mirror image of the idol to which they bow. Isn't that something? 
become a image, a mirror image, a reflection of the idols that they serve, that they give homage to. That means to bow down, to worship. And that's sad when we find ourselves in that state of mind where we just don't care about the judgment of God anymore. Don't fear God. One thing about it, the word tells us, be not deceived. God is not to be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that should be also reap. Because we find ourselves making excuses to give in to the voice of the enemy and follow after his lies and his trickery and live a wicked life on our way to hell. So I encourage you tonight to check your heart tonight, to see where are you are in your faith. Are you walking in truth and righteousness? Are you serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you worshiping him? Or are you a slave to Jezebel? That's something you have to answer for yourself. Am I a slave to Jezebel? Or am I a slave to Jesus Christ? Because we have to make a decision in ourselves because one day God's going to call your name. People are dying every day. Last week we had four deaths in our family. Four deaths. And I tell you, it is just, just devastating to hear of so much death, not just in our family, but many other families. But death is something we cannot escape. When God chooses for you to die, you're going to die. But how you die is determined to how you live for Christ or you live for the devil. So when I die, if I've been living for God, serving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then I have a guarantee. I have a contract with God that when I leave this earth, I will abide in the heavenly place with Christ Jesus forever and reign with him on the throne. The word tells us that. One can therefore tell a lot about biblical characters by identifying their gods. Isn't that something? You can tell a lot about a person by who they serve. By carefully studying the idols they revered, that means they, they worship. We gain insight into lifestyles, behavior patterns, and belief systems that are able to surmise the reasons for the biblical characters' personalities. Oh my God, that's something. Motivation and character flaws. So you can learn a lot by watching a person. That's why children are like sponges. When they're little, between the age of two and three, it's the prime age you start teaching them. Because if you don't start teaching them at that age the right way to live, the things to do in life, the enemy's going to teach them. They're going to start doing all the stuff you tell them not to do that's not of God until they start even getting older and become teenagers. And they become rebellious, backbiters, talking back to parents and not listening to parents, doing what they want to do, raising the parents and threatening the parents, fighting the parents. All this stuff happens in the church today. Children rise up against their parents, start fighting their parents. And God is trying to wake us up, church, tonight to pay attention that we are the children of the Most High God. And we got to live our lives to the full to glorify God in all that we do. It's very important as a child of God to live your life to glorify God in every day you're living. Amen. Let's go on a little further. Glory to God. This is a good lesson. I pray it's blessing you tonight. The more fully understand the manifestation of Jezebel, we need to closely examine her gods. In other words, how can you overcome an enemy if you don't know what the enemy is? How can you recognize the demonic force if you never experienced the influence of a demonic force? We all have been tested. We've been tried by the enemy over and over and over to turn away from God. So if anyone comes to tell you that I'm an atheist and I don't believe in that God stuff, they're lying to themselves. Because God is the one that wakes them up in the morning. 
God's the one that revealed to them who he is throughout the world. The whole world in today's time is no, starting to know who Jesus is. Even in foreign countries, the gospel is being preached all around the world. And it tells us in the Bible that before Christ comes again, the whole world would have heard the gospel. They would be without excuse for not turning their lives over to Jesus. So we got to learn our enemy. We got to learn what type of gods that are attached to Jezebel. So like those African idols. I can't stand those things. They're evil looking. They're wicked. They carry spirits. And people don't realize that. Witch doctors prayed over those idols that you buy and put in your house. They prayed over those things. And then when things start manifesting in your house that's unseen and, 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 and mystical, you need to check what you got in your house, what you brought in there recently. Because sometimes we can bring stuff from other people who've been dibbling and dabbling in witchcraft and spirits attached to the things they give you. You got to denounce those spirits when you take stuff from people. If you know they're not a child of God, not serving the Lord Jesus Christ, pray over what they give you. And denounce the spirit of witchcraft and any demonic force may be attached to whatever they gave you. Because these spirits would travel through entities of things that we carry from other people. Glory to God in the highest. We need to closely examine her gods as well as those of her family. In this way, we, we will learn ways to, to contend successfully with this evil power and destroy her evil influences. Once we learn what is attached to Jezebel, what's controlling her, then we'll learn how to deal with the adversary. Because the enemy is not playing fair today. He's bringing things to our lives for our own demise. And many times we just precariously go through life, not prayed up, not paying attention, and, and allow the enemy to attack us in areas of our lives that we should, should not be attacked. But because we let our guard down, we, we stop praying and seeking the face of God, we stop fasting, stop praying, we stop doing the things that God wants to do to maintain our spiritual growth. So we start declining instead of inclining in health. So you start getting sick spiritually, then it impacts your physical being. Sometimes illnesses that happen in our bodies are some things are attached from the spirit world of the enemy. We have to recognize when I've been around certain people who impacted me with certain negative things. And the words that they spoke over me because sometimes people begin to pray over you for your destruction. They pray for you to get sick. They pray for you to die because of jealousy. You got a lot of jealous folk of you in the body of Christ who will do everything in their power to see you fall. So we got to learn our adversary. We got to learn how to contend with our enemy successfully. To know the evil power of the enemy and learn how to destroy the evil power of the enemy. It would be beneficial to get a red pen and a, or a marker. Listen to this. My God, my God. As God will reveal areas of idolatrous worship that you may not be aware of, you have embraced. God will give you revelations. When you pray and you spend time in his presence, God will reveal to you certain things that have came into your life unaware. And God will begin to show you how to defeat your enemy. We got to know the enemy. We got to know what God is conveying to us, what the enemy looks like in our lives, what he has influenced in our lives, the areas that he's attacked in our lives, the things he brought into our lives to destroy us. We got to be on guard. We got to wake up, church. We got to pay attention. Know your enemy. There's a book called Know Your Enemy. You got to know the strategies of your enemy. You got to know the negative influence of your enemy. You got to know the, the stealth mode of your enemy, where he comes from, where he's trying to take you, what he's trying to do to you. You got to know exactly what the enemy is doing to break you down. 
Sometimes you got to sit down and let God begin to build you and just write. Just write certain things that God tell you by the Spirit. It can be idolatry, fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, lying, stealing, a wicked mindset, a perverted mind, a haughty spirit, stubbornness, pridefulness, all types of stuff that we allow into our heart. Because anything that enemy brings to your life, it goes into the heart to destroy you. Because he knows the heart is where life comes from. If your heart stops pumping today, you're going to die. The same way it is in the spirit. If you stop praying, stop seeking the face of God, you make yourself a prey for the enemy to attack your heart. What he does, he attack your heart because he knows that the blood flows from the heart through the blood, through the veins. And then whatever he can put in the heart to pervert it, it can flow through the entire body and cause decay from the inside. That's what he's looking for. A person he can corrupt, pervert, and destroy from the inside out. The Holy Spirit comes in. He cleansed the heart. He changed the heart. He purified the heart. So that you can have life flowing from the inside out. So whatever the Holy Spirit deposits inside of you, it produces life from the inside out. So your whole body will be full of life. Jesus says if you walk in darkness, your whole body will be full of darkness. But if you walk in the light, you'll be full of light. The radiance of God's glory revealed in you. It's very important as a child of God to walk in the light of truth. Glory to God in the highest. Feel free to mark every page where the Lord reveals an iniquity pattern in your life. Remain open and read slowly. Ask him to open your heart, your eyes, and ears. So that you can be totally free from Jezebel's influence. Isn't that something? I always talk about the same thing. The ear gate, the eye gate, the heart, the mind. Because a lot of things that we hear, it goes into the mind. When it gets to the mind, it gets to the heart. So if I hear negativity, and around people always curse and slander and talk about folk, that same spirit will influence you to behave in the same pattern they're living and do the same things they're doing to hurt other people, to become a gossiper, a talebearer. Because you have entertained an unclean spirit. When an unclean spirit is cast out of a person, it goes searching for another place to dwell. And when it finds none, he brings back seven more spirits. And the state of the person becomes worse than they were in the beginning because of the influence of negativity. Because if I can continue to tell you all types of things about other people, the gossip about folk, talk about folk, curse folk out, lie on folk, deceive folk, and you continue hanging around me, you're going to act the same way I do eventually. Because kindred spirits, familiar spirits, we talked about this in previous lessons, familiar spirits attach itself to people of the same like faith. You know that, did you? The same like faith. Because they got to have faith in the spirit of the enemy that the same influence is going to work in their lives. So if you attach yourself to a familiar spirit, you got faith in that spirit to destroy yourself and somebody else. My God, that was a good point. I just got that from the Holy Spirit. So listen to this. Feel free to mark every page where the Lord reveals iniquitous patterns in your life. Remain open and read slowly. Ask Him to open your heart, your eyes, and ears so that you can be totally free from Jezebel's influence. Listen to this. Dog ear, every page 
that ministers to you. In other words, take note or pay attention. A journal or use a different color marker to identify the prayers targeted for the end of each chapter. You have permission to mark up the entire book if necessary. And the author says, I want you to free be I want you free indeed. I want you free indeed. You cannot be free if you do not desire to be free. Stop making excuses for your iniquity. Stop nursing and cursing and rehearsing your sin. Stop allowing yourself to be influenced by the enemy where you get stuck in a dark place and you whine and complain about everything that's going wrong in your life. Stop crying. Dry the tears from your eyes. Get up off your, 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 off your floor, off your mat. Get out of your pit of despair. Rise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee because God wants the light to shine in you to take away the spirit of despair and bitterness and, and get rid of that pity party. We have to want change. Change is not going to be effective in your life till you want to be changed. You do not want to be changed. You'll never be changed. Listen to this. Jezebel brought her guards with her. Ain't that something? Jezebel brought her guards with her. How many times you carry your God with you when you leave your house? How many times have you allowed yourself to entertain a negative spirit and let it follow you throughout the whole day? All because of one person spoke something negative to you in your ear gate. It's stuck in your mind because you didn't denounce it, didn't cast it out. And that thought began to make you miserable throughout the day, get you whining, complaining, and grumbling about things that's not even in your power to even handle or deal with. But you get stuck in that place where you just keep on holding on to all this stuff that's not even yours. The word says, cast down every imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You got to cast that stuff down. Because whatever it is in your mind that's not of God, you got to recognize what it is, identify what it is, and command that thing to leave your mind. Because once it leaves the mind, it leaves the heart. Because you give it no more power of relationship to stay in your body. You hear that? You, re you de de delinquish it of its power of relationship in the mind, in the heart, the ears, in your entire being. And you cast it out. You got to relinquish the enemy's power, his authority. Stop giving it to the enemy to control your thought life. But let the Holy Spirit fill you up with power and authority to overcome. Because the greatest is in you than he is in the world. Let's go a little further. Jezebel's name translates as unhusband. Although married, she would never fully submit to her husband, signifying that true significance of marriage was not important. Isn't that something? The spirit of Jezebel. Does not value marriage. Does not take the covenant seriously. Matter of fact, she defies the covenant and goes against the covenant because she rises over the authority of her husband. She puts herself in the place as a husband. That spirit, I've seen marriages where the wives control their husbands, even in the church. And she put herself as head of the household. Whatever she say, he has to do. He is a spaghetti backbone, weak Christian had no power to stand up against the Jezebel spirit in his own wife. We got to wake up, church, and pay attention and stop allowing the enemy to take control of our relationships. Her marriage to Ahab was a political arrangement. Ahab's father, Omri, was Israel's sixth king. 
he sealed an alliance with the Phoenician through the marriage of his son to Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, the king of Sidonians. And the Phoenician people were people were idol worships. And they they served idols, and so Ahab was supposed to be the king of Israel following God, which he started out following God. But down the line that she became weak and, and, and had no strength to stand against his own wife. So he allowed himself to be put in, in judgment of God because of his rebellious heart. And so the daughter of Ethelbal, the king of Sidonia, was Jezebel. The lions brought a peace treaty, but this was not the, just a treaty between two nations. It was a treaty with idolatry. Isn't that something? They pledged the treaty through marriage to bring two generations together that God banned it. God forbid the children of Israel to marry into any type of nation that were idol worshipers. And Ahab permitted this to be so by rebelling against God's authority. When Ahab married Jezebel, she brought not only her alliance, listen to this, this is really good here, but also her idol worship to Israel. Ain't that something? That's how wicked she was. She had a very strong, powerful influence over her husband to introduce idolatry worship to the children of Israel. Jezebel set up idols worship and prostitution in the temples. Ain't that something? Prostitution in the temples? You know how prostitutes be on the streets and they stand on the corner waiting on cars to come by and they flagging them down so they can make them some money through sexual encounters. Jezebel did the exact same thing to the children of Israel. She brought prostitution to the house of God where the children even start becoming adulterous with idols and doing things that brought shame to God's people. For years, Israel has struggled with the idolatrous nation, their lifestyle. Now because of political protocol, Israel was, was ceremonially required to respect the religious beliefs of Ahab's wife. That's sad. That's really sad. All because of Ahab, the king. The king turned on God and then turned on his people. And now they have to follow his belief system, his doctrine, his heresies, his false, false worship. Because that's what his wife wanted. So we got to pay attention, church, and know that the Lord is in control of everything that's going on in our lives. And denounce the spirit of wickedness that comes to our lives through prostitution, through adultery, spiritual fornication, sexual sins. It's become idols. We got to denounce those things. And stand fast on the word of truth. Because the word of God that says the truth shall set you free. You got to know within yourself that it's God who's at work in you to will and do according to his good pleasure. My God, my God. Let's go a little further. We're going to close in a few minutes. This is a prime example of what would happen if our political system embraces Jezebel, the devil moves right in and takes over. In your house, in your marriage, in your children, in your church, in your community, in our nation. If we don't shut down the Jezebel spirit, Start praying against that stronghold. 
demonic power of the enemy will control your entire destiny. Listen to this. The devil moves right in and takes over and soon becomes politically correct to compromise and embrace all levels of spiritual idolatry. Ain't that something? Politically correct. You know how the politics, they come with these all these these things they plan on doing, they get in office, these false promises, and how they're going to help the community, they're going to change certain laws and decrees, and all lies, just so they can get in office. And once they get in office, they turn on the people. The enemy does this through Jezebel. Once he gets an authority in your life, he begins to make everything compromisable or you can begin to follow his spiritual idolatry and feel no shame no condemnation no conviction no repentance because he doesn't want you to stop serving this idol the Jezebel influences convinces us that being politically correct is more important than being godly obedient to be politically correct is better than being godly obedient. That's what the enemy tells you. But God's word tells us he resists the proud, the rest of the humble. He tells us to repent and turn from our wicked ways. He'll hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal the land. If my people will call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face. All what God is looking for is a heart that's yielded, surrendered, and released to his authority. Where he can come into your life and influence you to follow righteousness and truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's take a deeper look at the idols Jezebel introduced to the Israelites and how they affected them and how the spirits behind them still affect us today. So we're not going to go into this today. We're going to start this on next week. The Lord says the same. We're going to get into all the different idols that followed the Jezebel spirit. As you see, the first one is a false god, Baal, or Baal in Hebrew, Baal, which is Baal. And we're going to find out the influence of the false god. So we got to pay attention and allow the Spirit of God to bring us to a place where we repent of our wicked ways and return to the Lord and follow after his truth and his righteousness. It's up to you, my brother, my sister, to make a decision to walk by faith and not by sight in the promise of God's word. If you don't follow God in his righteousness and his truth, you invoke the judgment of God to fall on you. If you are one of those who have given into idol worship, made mistakes, got into adultery and fornication, physical, spiritual, doesn't matter what it is, just repent. You know God is tugging at your heart. You know he's calling you to come to the place of laying your life down before him. Just open your ears up and hear his voice calling you and be obedient. God looks for obedience better than a sacrifice. He doesn't want your sacrifice. He doesn't want your offerings. He wants your heart. He wants you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice unto him as a pleasing sacrifice, the word says. When you submit to God, resist the devil, he will leave you alone for a season. The same we did with Jesus in the wilderness, Luke chapter 4. He left him for a season. But then he came back to test him again later on. Then he does the same, he does the same thing with you. He'll leave you for a season. But then he comes back to test you again. To try to get you to fall into idol worship. So I pray this bless you tonight and that it encourages you to get into your word. Say your word. Read uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 9. I tell you, this is a really good lesson because God is speaking by His Spirit tonight. And 
We have to really pay attention to what God wants to convey to us through his word by the spirit to wake up and allow our eyes to be... 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Correction, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We have to wake up and allow God to stir us up with the fire of the Holy Spirit to get us to a place of repentance and prayer. We seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. So God is drawing you by, your, by his spirit. He says, he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. He's drawing you by his spirit tonight, and it's up to you to make a, make a decisive decision if you're going to follow after him with your heart, your soul, your mind, and your spirit. You cannot fight the enemy in your own strength. The only way you can overcome the enemy is when you submit to his authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Jezebel spirit is not an easy spirit to, to break off your life. It's not easy. It takes consecration. It takes devotion and dedication to follow God. And submit to Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And when you do that, do you find that spirit breaking off your mind and your heart? So we got to get to the place we hear it and be obedient. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. God is speaking to the church tonight. He's speaking to us as his children to bring order back into our lives. Read Revelation chapter 2 when God came to different churches, seven churches, and he brought accusations against those churches, but yet he brought grace and mercy. He's doing the same thing today. He's bringing judgment, but yet he's still providing mercy because he loves us. He cares about us. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but to repent and turn from their wicked ways and follow him. So we're going to close tonight at this point. But I pray this has blessed you and have encouraged you and have given you an insight and understanding know what spirit to be looking for. Even pray that God reveal to you what it is in your heart that needs to be cast out. Because we all have something that's of a Jezebel spirit and idol worship in our hearts that needs to be rebuked and be cast out. And Satan tonight, the Lord rebuked you. And he commanded loose your hold off of God's children and off their minds and their hearts and set them free. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word tonight, O oh God. I pray that it has not fallen to deaf ears, but it brings change and insight to the hearers and those who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church, God. Help us to do better, desire to do better, to live for you, God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purify our thoughts our minds, our hearts, oh God, that we realign ourselves back with the promise of your word to walk in obedience, God. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. As we do each week, if you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, the word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. That's talking about you and it's talking about me. We can be born again by believing that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be the sacrifice for our sins and to die on an old rugged cross that he could die and then go into the grave and be raised again the third day according to the scriptures to bring us new life, bring us salvation. You can receive the same salvation tonight by praying this simple prayer. You even might be a backslider. If you pray this prayer, you will be restored tonight. Because God loves you. He cares about your soul. He doesn't want you to perish. So I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Sins knowing and unknown. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit and that with power to be a witness to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen again. You are going to be filled with the Spirit of the living God by the Holy Spirit. Your mind has been renewed. Your life has been changed tonight by just praying that simple prayer. Now you are born again, and the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you because you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. I pray this lesson has really enriched you in your spirit to make you think.
Examine your heart. Take a moment, take the time out to just sit down, even to write these things down. Think about the things in your life that you want God to change and purge out of you. And allow God to do it by His Spirit. And I guarantee you will be set free from the inside out. And you find yourself being full of joy and life, grace and mercy being bestowed upon you. And the power of God working on the inside of you to perfect you, to make you better every day. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week at the 6 o'clock hour. God bless you. You all have a good night. Anyone got any questions before we go, though? Any questions? Amen. Thank you all for coming on tonight. Thank you very much. I see quite a few of you on tonight. I pray that you continue to be encouraged, be enriched in your spirit. Don't let the devil steal your joy. But continue to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in psalms and hymns, the spiritual psalm. That you make a sweet melody in your heart unto the Lord. That means have a joyful song coming from your heart to praise God. Let him draw you. He's drawing us tonight into the place of the living waters that we can drink and find a refreshing in the springs of life. God bless you, uh, Sister Bernadine. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You all be blessed and continue to stay excited about Jesus. If you got the book, read chapter 3. Read chapter, it's really a good chapter. I read the whole book myself twice. And I tell you, this book is very enriching and it's powerful because it sets you free. It's making us aware of how to deal with the enemy in our own personal lives every day as we trust God in his word to manifest his power in us. And I guarantee when you do that, God himself will be glorified through your life by your obedience and your sacrifice to make a decision to follow him all the days of your life. Amen. If this, this has been a blessing to you, y'all, don't forget to sow a seed into the ministry. You can do it to catch up. I put the links on the bottom of the comment page. You can you can uh, sow a seed to the ministry. If you know how to do Facebook stars, you can do Facebook stars. That also add up to money as well for the ministry. But you all continue to be blessed and highly favored of God. Until next week, shalom. Have a great and a blessed night. Amen.